Uh, let us pray. Eternal and everlasting God, we thank you for this day, a day that only you have made. We shall not only rejoice and be glad in it, but we shall offer you sacrifices of praise. Right now, God, we pray that you would incline our ears to hear and our hearts to receive bread from heaven. Lord, let your word go forth, never ever to come back void, but accomplish the purpose for which it is sent. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we do pray, God, and we give you thanks. Let us all say together, amen. Uh, stand with me all over the building and turn with me to the 21st chapter of the gospel as recorded by St. Matthew where I'm going to give the first of two very different sermons today that the Lord has laid on our heart. Uh, Matthew, the 21st chapter, and we find ourselves uh, with our feet firmly set post-resurrection but pre-Pentecost as we are in this time of year on the Christian liturgical calendar that we refer to as a resurrection tide, which is German for season, resurrection season, post-resurrection but pre-Pentecost. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Did I, what did I say? You were paying attention. Amen. God bless you. Matthew, the 28th chapter. I have to test you every now and then. It was just a test. I heard that. <laughs> Hear Matthew's narration. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen just as he said. And come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Meanwhile, while the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city, reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say. His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always 
to the very end of the age. The scripture as it is written, it is always our prayer and yet again today that the Lord bless us in the reading and the hearing of his most holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord and each other. Turn to your neighbor, take them by the hand and say to them, neighbor, don't get caught up in fake news. <laughs> My subject for this service, very different from what it will be at the next service, is uh, good news versus fake news. Good news versus fake news. The old folk used to have a saying that the devil is a liar. God is a God of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. James, and uh, no one cometh to the Father but by me. But the, the devil is a liar. Jesus contrasted himself with the enemy when he said, the thief comes but to kill, to destroy, and to tear down, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And one of the ways the thief kills is through lies. The scripture says he is the father of, of lies. And uh, one of the hallmarks of our current day and time in the pol uh, very quickly shifting and changing political culture is the departure from fact-based conversation and, and a media which seems to have no defense, uh, no immunity from the dumping of fake news into the mediums that are supposed to be disseminating real information. Amen. We come to find out that our own most recent presidential election was uh, to some immeasurable degree impacted by fake news. Right. When collaborants, the, 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 the Russians and some other folks probably closer to home. WikiLeaks and others participated in hacking emails on both sides of the aisle but holding them on one side, dumping them on others and then we now have the FBI telling us that some of what was passed off as democratic emails were in fact phony emails it was fake news. We have an entire channel that is devoted to fake news. More propaganda than journalism because journalism has a threshold. It has to be fact-checked. It has to be proportional. It has to be reasonable. And so we, we on a day-to-day -day basis we turn on our cell phones in the morning or turn to our cell phones in the morning and we see stories that are reported one day and the next day are reported to have been false stories. There once was a time when if it was in print you could be reasonably sure that somehow or another this thing had been vetted, it had been filtered, it had been screened. There was a, there was a pride in presenting something that had some truth to it. Uh, even if it was spun by an ideological slant, it had to have some basis in fact, lest one face the shame of presenting something out there that in fact was fake. Now we live in a day and time where people lie boldly. <laughs> they'll present legislation and they'll say uh, that it'll cover preconditions when you read the text and the narrative and see it does not cover preconditions and allows insurance companies to dump the old, the poor, and the sick. Imagine that, a health care bill that covers healthy people. When I hear Jesus say, the well don't need a physician. I've come for the sick. Imagine that, a health care system that is designed to provide access to healthy people but no access to the poor, the old, and to the sick. <laughs> well, we come to find out that when it comes to our gospel business, our, the kingdom business, even this business of reporting the news of the resurrection, the news that split history, 
as William uh, Russell, James Russell Lowe said that Caesar may so occupy the palace and Christ the cross, but that same Christ will rise up, split history into A.D. and B.C. so that even the reign of Caesar must be dated by his name. It was three words that turned history. He is risen. And yet it has always been reported into the headwind of fake news. We have a bifurcated uh, narration going on here in Matthew 28 as we see the commissioning of the church according to the Matthean tradition and letting us know that from the outset the church has always had to press on in the face of and in the tension of and in competition with fake news around the resurrection itself. On one hand, Matthew gives us on one side of the screen what is happening among and with the disciples themselves. Uh, the Jewish Sabbath has passed. It began at sundown on Friday. It ends when morning breaks on Sunday morning. So as the sun comes up, and slaps darkness from the sky without making a sound. The Jewish Sabbath day ends and Sunday morning comes and Jewish women uh, are shuffling their feet on their way to the tomb to do a final burial uh, for the sake of the hasty burial they did on Friday after the Lord lay his head in the locks of his shoulders and gave himself up to the sleep of death. According to Mark's account, they have a question in their mind, who's going to roll away the stone? Matthew does not include those details. He simply gives us information on who did it. Or as my friends used to say, who done it? When the women get to the tomb, we know by Matthew's account, the stone is already rolled away because as the sun came up, there was a great earthquake. And the earthquake signaled the descent of an angel that stopped by K&G, got a white suit, went to the tomb, a buff, apparently a buff angel, because while it took several Roman soldiers on Friday to roll the stone in front of the tomb, it only took one buff brother in a new suit to roll the stone away. The Romans, who never took serious Jesus' foretelling that he would be raised on the third day, because he told Pilate, you tear this temple down, I'll raise it up in three days. They never took serious the prophecies of these strange people in this strange land with these strange customs, nor did they take serious the, 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 the desperate babblings of dying men from crosses and it was evidence because you can tell what people believe by how they behave they set a guard of soldiers on watch outside the tomb to prevent the possibility of some of the Jesus followers trying to break in steal his body to stage a resurrection and give a false witness that he had raised to stir up the crowds so they tried to prevent it by putting guards on the outside and as they rolled the stone as an extra layer of protection they sealed the tomb with an adhesive so that you could tell if someone had broken it. Like the adhesion you find on your water bottles and your jars in the store. Because today you can't trust folk. They, they might open up the jar and dump something in it. Come on somebody. To make sure no one tampered with it, Sister Pam, they put an adhesion around the tomb that you could tell if they, somebody had moved the stone. Trying to avoid a break in, never once did they think that your real challenge might be to try and stop a breakout. And a breakout he did when as morning broke and the Sabbath end and the Lord's day began, darkness was smacked from the sky without making a sound, but the ground did shake to signal, you better get ready, get ready, get ready. An angel descended, stopped by K&G, got a white suit, a buff angel rolled the stone away, and the soldiers, the trained men of valor, when they saw the brother in the white suit, buff enough to roll away by himself, what it took all of them together, it said that they fell down dead. <laughs> Literally scared the out of them. You know what goes in there. 
And I don't know about you, but if I saw a brother, <laughs> buff brother in a white suit, <laughs> moving by himself what it took several soldiers to move, I might have fell down right on with him. <laughs> fell down. There. The women get to the tomb. The, to the stone is rolled away. Soldiers are unconscious. And they're wondering, where is the body of Jesus? They, they, they get to the tomb. Uh, in John's account, it says that they go inside the tomb. But in Matthew's account, they don't go in the tomb. The brother who rolled the stone is standing there at the door of the tomb, maxing, relaxing, waiting to make the announcement, I know you seek Jesus. He ain't here. He bounced just like he said because that's how we talk particularly when we suited that's how we talk the swag and the suit have to match come on somebody when you dress it up you also talk it up he here he bounced just like he said and it said now go tell his disciples go tell the brethren to meet him in Galilee, and he will be there. And he will meet them there. And it says that the women took off. It says some believed and some doubted. Some believed and, and some doubted. And, and, and apparently these, these women believed because they took off and told the brothers. You can always tell what people believe by the way that they behave. Because see, when people, when people believe, faith always sets folk in motion. Huh? You heard the story about Faith Baptist Church? Can I tell you the story about Faith? Faith Baptist Church, it's, it was out in the country, and they were having a drought. And the pastor told the membership, most of whom were farmers, that they were, gonna, they were to come next week prepared to pray for rain. And so he, that week, uh, he prayed that they would have the faith to believe to all come and pray for rain. That next Sunday, the pastor got to church and the members were all sitting in front of him. And he, instead of uh, beginning to pray for rain, he says, I recommend that we change the name of the church. Change it from, to anything but faith. And they said, Pastor, why do you want to change the name of the church? I thought we were praying for rain today. He said, I, I, I want to pray I want us to change the name of the church from faith. I don't care what we change it to, but we can't call it Faith Baptist Church because we don't have none. They said, what are you talking about? He said, I told you all to come this week prepared to pray for rain, and apparently you're not. They said, what are you talking about? The church is packed. We're all here and running over. He said, yeah, but ain't nobody brought no umbrella. You can tell what people believe by how they behave. And, and he says these women ran. Some believed and some doubted. Their behavior is always telling on what you believe because when you have faith, it sets you in motion. The women ran, told the disciples. Now, according to some of the other gospel writers' accounts, they blew off the women's witness as idle tales. But according to Matthew, at least some of them believed because the brothers met Jesus in Galilee, as he said, and the Lord showed up. There's a paradigm here if you want to know how miracles move. Some people said miracles move on faith because faith moves mountains. Have I got a witness? Miracles don't move on muscle. Miracles move on faith. Faith is the pin number that can make withdrawals from the infinite treasuries of heaven. If you need a miracle today, you got to have faith. But miracles move on faith. Not muscle, but miracles move on faith. Miracles don't move by preaching harder or singing louder. Come on, somebody. Miracles move on faith. Faith, And here we have the angel who witnesses to the women that the Lord is raised as he said. They believe it. Their belief sets them in motion. And as it sets them in motion, the Lord appears to them. Then they fall at his feet and worship him.
They run to the disciples. They witness to the disciples that the Lord is raised. And at least some of them believe it because apparently they go to where the Lord said for them to meet him. Their faith is apparent because it set them in motion to meet Jesus at the spot. And when they get to the spot, the Lord shows up. If you remember nothing else about this sermon, remember this paradigm, the miracle moving paradigm. When there, if we witness, folk will believe. Why? Because faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. How can they believe on what they have not heard? heard come on somebody faith cometh by hearing when we Jesus said if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men unto that's all I came to tell you this morning folk don't believe because ain't nobody witnessing if we witness folk will believe if they believe it is set up in motion, and people who are set in motion by their faith will see the Lord for themselves. Come on, somebody. They wit the angel witnessed the women believe. Their belief set them in motion, and the Lord showed up, and they fell at his feet. The women witnessed the disciples believe. They believed it set them in motion, and the Lord showed up for them too. Come on, somebody. When you but someone witnesses, someone else will believe, and when they believe, it will set them in motion, and then the Lord shows up. And when the Lord shows up, all things are possible come on somebody if you want the Lord to show up somebody better witness somebody will believe and when they believe it a set them in motion and when folk are in the faith motion the Lord shows up and when the Lord shows up all things are possible I'm really done but I just want to make a few more points while that is going on while we have the locomotion of faith it says, but others doubted. You can tell they doubted because they weren't doing nothing and they weren't going anywhere. And part of the reason why some didn't believe, Brother Mitchell, is because they, some of them didn't believe because they had been exposed to the scandal, the fake news. Some heard the good news. They believed to set them in motion. And while they were in faith motion, the Lord showed up and all kinds of things became possible. And miracles were happening in their lives. But then others couldn't get with it. They didn't believe. In part, we know, because they had been exposed to the fake news. On a whole other channel, they was running a story. A fake story. I don't know if it came out of the Roman White House. I don't know where it came from. But it was fake news. It said that after the, the sorry soldiers, somebody say sorry soldiers. Because part of what they train to, the tro soldiers to do, they train you to kill, yes. But they also train you to be ready to die for country. Not to faint in fear. That's a fake soldier who faints at the sight of the perceived enemy. These sorry soldiers, they must have took their worst soldiers and put them on this Galilean watch, this Jerusalem watch. These fake soldiers who fainted when the brother with the suit showed up. It says when they woke up, they ran back in town to those who had collaborated and conspired uh, with the Romans for the arrest and the execution of Jesus, they ran, but those who had conspired with Judas for 30 dirty pieces of silver to have him put to death, those who had engaged in the subterfuge and the under the table and the backstabbing and the backdooring, those who worked in the shadows, those who do their business with sleight of hand, they went back to those collaborators in the murder of our innocent Lord, and they said, what had happened was... He ain't here. And they told them the truth, which from the perspective of the elders and, and the chief priests was an inconvenient truth. I, I know y'all was worried about a break in. There, in fact, was a breakout. You got two groups witnessing of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. One is the women who go tell the disciples. And, and then there's also the soldiers who, too, are a witness. Uh, but they're a negative witness. The women were excited about the good news. The soldiers didn't know what to do with the news, whether to call, even call it good. They went back with the conspirators against the Lord and said, what had happened was a brother, 
the ground began to shake. A brother with a new suit who was buff rolled away the stone and next thing we know uh, we get up the body gone and some women was running away shouting and they said well this is not what we want to get out it says so what they did was they bought their silence it says they gave them a large sum of money now large is a relative term it depends on how big your rent is how you define large come on somebody there's some brothers who will kill you over fifty dollars and then there's other that don't move their cash flow it takes a whole lot more it was enough for the, from their perspective which was large it says take this money here's your story what we want you to say is not that you fainted at the sight of an angel but that y'all was sleepy and fell asleep. Now everybody knows that that is not plausible deniability because soldiers do not fall asleep on watch. Those who do are court-martialed. Come on, somebody. They're asking them to risk their military career on making a confession that would cause any soldier to, get, to be decommissioned, to get a dishonorable discharge, or to be court-martialed to say that when you are guarding strategic assets, you fell asleep on your watch. You ask them to risk their military. They paid them enough to risk a court martial and their honorable discharge and their military commission. But apparently, it was a large. Somebody say cha ching. They went from poor soldiers living in military housing to moving on up. They paid them, paid them enough for their silence to take that dishonorable discharge, risk a court martial, and 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 lose their military commission. They paid them. This is what you gonna say, Joe. You gonna say you are a sorry soldier who fell asleep while guarding strategic assets, and somebody came and took the asset away. That's what we're going to say. And listen, if you worried about what the governor who, this, who, who, who co-signed on this mission, if you're worried about if it gets to them, don't worry about the governor. We will take care of the governor so that you don't have to worry about it. And it says, and they stuck to the script. That was their story, and they stuck to to it like OJ is that your suit uh, yeah is them your slacks yeah is them your shoes nope that's his story and he stuck to it <laughs> they stuck to the story and it says in this story it says from the writer from the perspective of Matthew it says that story was broadly uh, promoted among the Jews it says to this day in that day that many of them heard the fake news rather than the good news while the women were saying he lives the soldiers and the souls in the Jewish community were saying he's dead and his body was stolen and those who believed were set in motion when they were set in motion the Lord showed up and there were signs and wonders breaking forth in their lives and others did not believe because they had been exposed to fake news which caused them to doubt and and nothing can happen where there is doubt soul numbing faith killing community divisive Some worship, some doubted based upon what story they heard. You know, it has always been the case that the church has always had to do its business against the headwind of fake news. Scandal, if you may. There was the scandal of the resurrection. There was scandal at the time that he lives. There was good news and fake news. We've always had to do our business in the midst of the scandal. For many centuries, the scandal was with, even within the church and how we understood uh, this resurrected Lord, who he was, the being of Christ. What, what, what theologians call Christological questions. Was he fully God? Fully man? Part God? Part man? Church spent centuries fighting among themselves, uh, just understanding this Jesus Christ, one of the bishops in Ephesus and the second century a man named Nestor um, he was removed from his seat as bishop his see if you if you may his Ephesian see and banished to what is 
today the Iraqi desert and his followers went initially up into Iraq, into what is today Iraq, then called Babylon or Macedonia, and it became a little incubator and they thrived, uh, what was considered a band of heretics because Nestor did not believe that he was fully God and fully human, he believed he was part God, part human in some ambiguous composite, so he, he was considered by the uh, those who were orthodox uh, believers that he was a heretic and so these followers of this heretic went into the Iraqi desert and then centuries later went into China it was the beginning of the Chinese church that is there today in part because it was founded by those who were initially defined as heretics the church fought for centuries over what we even believed about Jesus and that scandal is what the world heard and many were turned off from the church because it says that the Christians can't get along with each other and many people in the world didn't want a faith that caused so much fracturing among the disciples themselves you know they say particularly among Christians they said particularly among Baptists if you got two Baptists in a room you got at least three opinions <laughs> sometimes our own internal feudings have been the cause of scandal fake news that have caused many to doubt in the 18th and 17th 18th and 19th centuries the the scandal uh, around the resurrection good news was was the whole matter of the institution of slavery as early as 1688 the Mennonites had made a decision that no slave holder could be part of the Christian fellowship. They thought it was irreconcilable with any notion of a golden rule and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And the, the Imago Dei, the image of God being within us all, that they attacked head on the racist underpinnings uh, of the institution of slavery, which had been embraced by uh, other Christians with their racial apologetics who, be, who, de who developed this subspeciation theology, this theology that the white race was in fact a new form of Israel and all people of color, whether they were yellow, red, or brown, or black, that they were a subspecies of the human race and that their rightful condition was in servitude to the white race. That is the thinking that bled into white Christians the last half millennium of, 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 of this country. It was, it was in the thinking of the eight prominent white clergymen who told Martin King that he was an outside agitator to whom he wrote and he said, who is your God? And it was the racial scandal that caused many to doubt. It turned off one Mahatma Gandhi who couldn't get into a church in South Africa because he was brown and became Hindu. Imagine if Mahatma Gandhi had been a disciple of Jesus Christ. He taught Christ better than most Christians, but imagine if he had actually shared in the baptism of Jesus. One of the greatest religious leaders and one of the greatest social activists and world changers and men of faith in the history of the planet was turned off from our faith because he ran into the race of the scandal of race that caused some to doubt. We, we, in, in, in the 20th century, it was the scandal of civil rights that divided the, the, the country. Clarence Jordan, one of the greatest New Testament theologians, a white man, kind of a, a 20th century update on the 19th century John Brown who led the, the, the challenge to Harper's Ferry, him and his little band of followers, mainly his own family, tried to overrun the National Armor to start, Armory to, in Harper's Ferry to start a armed revolt against the slaveocracy and was, uh, was caught as he was snitched out by a black man sitting on the steps of the church across the street from the National Armor. A white man fighting against slavery was snitched out by a black man sitting on a church, a black Christian, snatched out a white Christian. A white Christian who knew that slavery was irreconcilable with Christianity was snatched out by a black man who fought more like a white man than a white man. I said a black man who was a commentator on Fox News snatched out John. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Have you ever seen a black man that talk like he got somebody else's mind but his own? Come on, somebody. 
And, 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 and here you had Clarence Jordan, who was one of the greatest New Testament theologians of the 20th century, who wrote the cotton patch versions of the epistles of Paul. He was arrested for marching with black people against legal segregation. And his brother, who was raised in that same little southern church, came and saw him when he was in jail. He said, Clarence, what are you doing in there? In that jail like that, we was raised in church. What are you doing breaking federal injunctions when they were told not tomorrow? What are you doing in there? And Clarence said to his brother, he said, I said Clarence Jordan, not Clarence Williams. He said, and he said to his brother, the question is not why I'm in here. The question is why you are not in here. And his brother said, listen, we may have been raised in the same house. We heard the same teaching of our daddy that said all people are equal. But the difference between me and you is that you believed it and I didn't. You can tell what people believe because when they believe something, it sets them in motion. And when it sets them in motion, God shows up. And it set him in motion, the scandal. I come to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, and just as the scandal of slavery, the scandal of race, the theological scandals, we into the 21st century, the, the scandal of gender politics, the scandal of human sexuality, is going to rock the church in the 21st century the same as the scandal of civil rights rocked it in the 20th century and the scandal of Christological nuances and debate rocked it in centuries before and the scandal of science at the time of the, the Renaissance and the Reformation when science and theology had to begin to speak to one another. There have been many things in the conversations of the church. There have been other unfortunate scandals as we've seen the scandals with priests and the scandals with mega churches and and people uh, simply trying to spiritualize their greed and their love of money and things and calling greed blessings and favor come on somebody the, the notion that God has favor for one over another the one the, the notion that divine favor is evidenced by an accumulation of worldly things by that thinking if you follow it out God loved Pharaoh more than he did Moses and the and, and the children of Israel in the slave pits of Egypt. Or by that thinking, Bill Gates is the son of God. Come on, somebody. And not somebody who, some poor somebody in the local community who don't know nobody but Jesus and found that that's enough. Come on, somebody. There have been many scandals that, that have caused some to doubt. But my brothers and my sisters, while the scandals cause some to doubt, when we hear the good news nonetheless, when it is preached, people believe, and when they believe, you know they believe because it sets them in motion, and when people are set in faith motion, God shows up. Right. The doctors tell us that the way you create immunity from disease is that they take a weakened strain of the lethal disease itself and inject it into the body, a strain that's not strong enough to kill you, but strong enough to, to make the body familiar with the disease in which the body will respond by developing antibodies that will rush to the point of contact if it ever comes in contact with a lethal strain and fend it off. So you, you make the, the body builds up a defense against the disease by being introduced to a weakened strain of the disease so that if it ever comes in contact with a lethal strain, it has already built up a defense to it. Don't you understand that the devil works the same way in trying to create doubt and of trying to get us to immunize us against this good news by exposing us to fake news. Whether, whether it is the missteps of saints, whether it is our dirty laundry dumped out into the open, whether it is current issues that challenge how we have understood our faith, these things are weakened strains of the gospel. And sometimes people hear the wrong thing before they hear the right thing, and when they come across the right thing, they've built up an immunity and they can't hear the gospel. Because by the time they hear the good news, they've already heard about what Reverend so-and-so did. And they've already heard about the fight up at the local church. And they've already saw that article in the newspaper. Come on, somebody. Perhaps some of you doubted at a previous time in your life when you were exposed to the fake news before you heard the good news. What's my message to you today? If you have seen Jesus and you know him for yourself, don't argue about the fake news. Just keep running and telling the good news. Because the Bible is clear 
if you will witness, come on somebody, faith comes by hearing. If you will witness, some will believe. You'll know when they believe because it'll set them in motion. And when they're set in the local motion of faith, there will, the Lord himself will show up. And you will know when the Lord has shown up because when he shows up, he shows out. And stones are rolled away. Mountains start getting moved. And sorrow is replaced with gladness. Weakness is replaced with power. Darkness is replaced with light. And life comes out of dead places. I wonder if I got two, three people in the house today who have seen him for yourself. There may be people on your left and to your right. They may doubt, but you just keep worshiping. And every chance you get, you open your mouth and you tell them, there are some things I may not know. There are some places I cannot go, but I am sure of this one thing. Jesus is real. For I have seen him deep within. Yes, God is real. Real in my soul. Yes, God is real. For he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. And because he lives, I can live also. Come on, somebody. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I can't keep to myself what the Lord has done for me. He is risen as he said. You ask me now, I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I'm a witness. So you can believe. If you believe it, take off running. If you run for him, he will show up. When he shows up, he will show out. Won't he do it for you? Won't he bear your burdens? Won't he dry your tears? Won't he put bread on the table? Won't he make a, your joy bells out of your midnight? Somebody say yeah. Tell the story. Just keep on telling the story because the good news will outlast the fake news. Talk about him if you want. Talk him down if you want. I'm going to talk him up because he picked me up. Look at your neighbor and say, talk him down if you want. I'm going to talk him up because he picked me up. Oh, come on, say it like you're meeting. Talk him down if you want to. Talk about the church if you want to. Talk about the preachers if you want to. Talk down the choir if you want to. By Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. In spite of all the fake news, if you just lift up Jesus, he'll do the drawing. Come on, somebody. My job ain't to make them come. My job is just to tell them about somebody who's worth coming to. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save who? Anybody step your neighbor high five and say, he can do it, he can do it, he can do it, he can do it. The doors of the church are open this morning. I don't know what you have heard. I don't know what you have seen that might make you doubt him. I don't know what foolishness you've been exposed to that's caused you to doubt the legitimacy of the power of God in Jesus Christ. I just come to tell you he's alive, he's real, he's the way and the truth and the life. And I come to tell you, at our best, his representatives, yes, we have feet of clay. Yes, we are filthy rags. Yes, we are crooked sticks. But the Lord of glory can make a straight strike with a crooked stick. Have I got a witness? I'm not telling you to believe in the messenger. I'm telling you to believe in the message that Jesus saves. And if you're here today... And perhaps your belief in Christ has been negatively impacted by some scandal, by, by some fake news. I offer you good news. 
that Jesus is real. Doors of church are open, whosoever will, I invite you to come. Because there's still no name under the heavens by which you can be saved except the name of except the name of come on shout it like you mean it shout it like you shout that name i offer you jesus and i offer you a church home where we will preach to you and teach to you and try our best to model to you the love of god in jesus christ if you're here today whosoever will would you come as the choir sings whosoever will would you come there are some things is there one this morning is there one whosoever will